all right so i'm going to do something different today literally just start the video right now yeah because it just feels like not really unnecessary but like the whole one minute intro then after that the 30 second or so intro and then i started up it's like yeah let's just literally start it up now so that's exactly what i'm going to do but as you can tell from the title i'm going to be looking at don't sleep on autoria and yeah honestly like i said let's just get this started Now, there's been many feats throughout our lifetime. The discovery of fire, the development of the wheel, right? Okay, what are you, what are you going on about here? Compared to the feats of a true king. A true Saber. king. <laughs> so for those of you who have been following the channel, you'll know that Saber is one of my favorite characters. She's also my favorite heroine from Fate Stay Night. Today, we're gonna talk about some of her feats throughout the series, and as an ambassador for the saber stance i insist that we do her justice before we jump off into the video i wanted to mention the release of my first merch product make oh, sure merch, you guys okay. check that out if you can devotion from left to right it says honor wisdom and devotion oh, just okay. because and i devotion. feel like those are some of the most important things all right here. i guess yeah and on the back of course the boy we have the koto meme in full effect in all of his glory now let's get it to start us off we're gonna be taking a look at one of the feats regarding saber's speed during the fight against medusa it was stated that both servants scaled a skyscraper that was 50 stories in an instant in the real world it is the ntt makuhari building it was originally 26 floors but in the story the author actually doubled the building in size we know this to be true because shiro took the elevator up to the 40th floor and then he emphasized how he had to run up the other 10. since we know that saber and medusa scaled the building in an instant this means that both servants are well on their way to okay, close. speed okay. in terms of traveling not to mention that medusa was at an advantage here since we know that she's the type of servant that prefers these advanced positions saber on the other hand was unhindered by her approach and still showed the best of her prowess when it really boiled down to it she then proceeded to dodge medusa and her familiar pegasus on a rooftop where she had absolutely nowhere to run several times following up these acrobatics saber incinerated them both in oh one yeah foul swoop of her excalibur took her out real and quick pegasus was a divine beast on top of that now i do want to point out that both servants were underpowered here medusa wasn't at her full potential because she was under shinji i'm saying that trash bro. Wasn't at her full potential Yo. because she was under shiro nonetheless they had the same handicap and saber still emerged victorious in the heavens field route things were a bit different while both characters were servants under sakura at the time saber was the one that had access to the immense mana supply on her side saber is just as strong as she was before she just has more energy to fight with but that's not the point that we want to look at the point here is that both servants were at their peak and despite that being the fact the story flat out says that in terms of technique strength and of course magical energy Ryder doesn't stand a chance and if she just so happened to mess up her plan she would have died instantly now let's bring it back to a classic the grand battle against jill de yes, in fate zero first of all we find out that she knows how to walk on water due to having the blessings from the oh yeah the lake. she had no idea about the f-15 jet that lancelot took over but her instinct skill came in clutch and gave her the foresight to know the damage that it was capable of it then tells us by good command of footwork saber can rival a jet fighter in terms of speed in the real world that same jet that lancelot took over can go up to 1875 miles per hour so yeah she was moving speed she easily dodges lancelot's bullets from that jet and could even deflect them if she wanted to 
This means that her feet alone brings her up to Mach 2.5 in terms of her speed. And while a couple of bullets for a servant of her caliber is like throwing Tic Tacs. Shoot, that means Gilgamesh was going just as fast, wasn't he? Into every Shoot. bullet that he shot. Each shot could have been fatal, added on to the fact that he was using the M61 auto cannon, which can fire up to 12,000 bullets in a minute because of his magecraft. So Saber is dodging thousands of fatal bullets at Mach 2.5 speeds. And honestly, Lancelot wasn't even what she was worried about. She was worried about Gilderay. Insane. Now let's get into one of Saber's phantasms, Invisible Air. By normal standards, Invisible Air is used as a sheath to conserve Saber's power, since just wielding Excalibur can take a vast amount of her energy. And literally like reveal her identity. It has a lot of manipulations and can also be used as a projectile. In the Heaven's Field route, Saber took heed to the tactics that Assassin was on. She knew that he was only trying to unnerve her, so she used Invisible Air against him instead. Once oh, she yeah, combines that's... Invisible Air yeah, remember with that? her skill instinct, she gets Get that protection power on that too. from the majority of projectiles. With this in mind, she was able to dodge 40 daggers from Assassin with no problem. She also has extraordinary power. A good example of this is during the Fey route when she fought against Heracles. She was able to channel enough energy and use Caliburn to kill Heracles six times over in one hit. And that was Caliburn. That wasn't even the real Excalibur, which is infinitely stronger than that. This is the definitive power gap that I was talking about, where Emia was able to kill Heracles on six different occasions, Saber was able to kill him six times at once. In the UB dub route, Cheryl mentions that the fight against Heracles was her third one in that same day. This tells us that even at her lowest point, with several wounds, she still refuses to fold. And she doesn't have a skill that lets her ignore fatal damage like Ku or Heracles. She's going off of sheer willpower. Another thing that we have to note is that she goes on to take one of Heracles' lives by releasing Excalibur inside of his body. Going back into Invisible Air, Nasu himself stated in an interview that when Saber is using Invisible Air, 1, it only represents a modicum, 8% of her true strength in swordplay. This means that whatever Saber is doing with Invisible Air, she's actually 12 times stronger than that. She doesn't even take y'all serious. What are we even talking about here? Then in the aftermath of this fight, she was able to heal her wounds in an hour due to the effects of Avalon. And lastly, in Heaven's Feel, she was giving Heracles that work. Again, the point was... Okay, so I don't know if you guys saw that, but yeah, it was definitely lagging there in the last few seconds. But I'm going to try and, lastly, in Heaven's Field, yeah, and start it back up here. Heracles that work Ho Again, hopefully this should work was that once she gained access to yeah just a little fpf master, drops here and there smacking this man and heracles jesus is yeah nice. another thing that we have to pay homage to is her tech from the very beginning of her fight with ku saber purposely left an opening to make ku believe that she dropped her guard when in fact the moment that he tried to stick his neck out she came back with the haymakers. I mean, she was nearly falling on the ground trying to give this man the business. My boy Ku was like, whoa, whoa, time out. Disengage. I don't like this. He wasn't ready eyes. for that. Looking at her instinct skill, we know that Saber gains a sixth sense during battle that's almost akin to her seeing into the future. By combining this with her A rank luck, she was able to dodge Ku's Phantasm, which otherwise would guarantee a fatal outcome. 
We also see her use this against Sasaki. At first, Saber had a hard time getting in on Sasaki's fighting style. But once she acquired the experience through battle, she was able to beat him using the instinct skill. She dodged a reality warping phantasm and out oh, yeah, get hit three times at once in terms of speed. Sasaki even mentions during the fate route that his sword would slice the head of someone with average skill, implying that Saber has to be no less than exceptional for her to still be alive. Next, we have to talk about her skill, Prana Burst. In Fate Zero, Saber showed us a variant of telekinesis where she fused the armor that would go on her body onto a motorcycle to strengthen its efficiency. At the same time, she added in her Prana Burst, which broke the law of physics and had her pushing nearly man anything in fate breaks the laws of anything she was like. able to keep up with a scander oh. at massive speeds while doing sharp turns and fending off his obstacles simply because her dexterity is just that high she outrode an actual rider and that's not even her class even when a scander tried to slow her down her skills and her noble phantasm allowed her to cut through a slab that was implied to weigh several thousands of pounds. She then tactfully used those same obstacles as a ramp to cut the distance between the scander literally moments after it appeared. And finally, she goes on to incinerate Ryder's phantasm in one blow. In her other battle against Lancelot, you see her pull off very similar things. She was able to casually flip a truck, which we know weighs several tons, <laughs> yeah, that's and heavy use right it there. as a shield against Lancelot. She then strong armed the entire truck across Literally the garage just pushing it. like it was made of jello and used it as a distraction for a preemptive strike at that. This was just what she accomplished in the later half of the fight. Prior to this, Saber was able to dodge Lancelot's bullets at point blank range. She dodged a missile from the same distance and she escaped the explosion without a scratch on her. And let's not forget to mention that her endurance is through. So this is really all you're story, capable of? That's Dave crazy. Is capable of using magecraft from the age of gods. Saber was able to nullify her spells every time she came into contact with her. In the Fate route, in the UB Dub route, and even in Heaven's Field, she blocked her spells out and smoked her in one shot. Her resistance goes as far as negating one of Kirisugu's command spells when he tried to get her to destroy the Grail. With all these feats and all this power, it might lead you to try to say that Saber is some type of Mary Sue, but we all know that that isn't true. In the UB dub route, the situation with Kazuki defined a very specific drawback for her. Other than using Rule Breaker, the efforts that Medea made against Saber were harmless. However, once Medea reinforced that same magecraft into Kazuki and used him as a vehicle, the story shows us that indirectly her magecraft can serve as a real problem. Another downfall that I really don't want to talk about, by the way, is the time that she got scraped by Gilgamesh. This was their first battle in the fate route. The story okay. tells us that Aya, at least at that time, had greater magical energy than Excalibur. And the worst part about it is that she had invisible air off when it happened. Other than having a better master and Avalon, of course, Saber was the closest to her full potential that she could have gotten. And she still got bodied. Oh no, you hate to see it. Now, while yeah, that hurts subject, for him. let's talk about her second fight with Gilgamesh when she used Avalon and got her revenge. We know that it's a pseudo reality marble that puts her in a bounded field and protects oh, yeah, her from that. anything in this world up to the sixth dimension. It is the highest level of defense in this world yeah, and it literally. can't be opposed by anything 
even the five true magics and if that wasn't enough avalon is a divine construct it's an actual relic which means saber doesn't have to waste magical energy manifesting it into the world but what she gains from having this relic is tremendous it can heal nearly any wound it was effortlessly able to block Aya the second time around which is not only one of the strongest weapons in the verse but it's literally a weapon that was created to warp reality and Gil still couldn't reach her this time Man, this around, was some Gil heat was right here that got folded next we nah. have to talk about Excalibur the OG fate to attention is that on top of having invisible air Saber also has 13 oaths on Excalibur that release a layer of its power and she can only reach these layers if she abides oh, that... by these oaths okay it's Wait, hold up yeah let me see that real quick so Bel Bedivere the enemy must be more powerful than oneself okay yeah, yeah i'm not gonna read all the names but the battle must be one-on-one -on -one. the enemy must not be an elemental battle must be one against evil must not involve personal gain must not be against humanity yes yeah, always humanity or something right with fate um you know either saving it or humanity being its own downfall most likely it being its own downfall and you know these what heroic spirits or these people you know it's just like you got to save that right you know humans they're the one causing the downfall of the world but yeah you still got to save them right make up for their uh, consequences must not be inhumane must be for truth must be to live save the world defend human order okay so, so literally everything right just keeping humanity safe one's comrades in arms must be courageous and that's an unknown name or knight um battle must not be against one of pure heart and must be in honor oh of pure heart. okay i was like wait what okay yeah pure heart someone like shiro then i guess battle must be an honorable one okay galad mordred oh yeah mordred okay mordred's must not be okay then arthur's arthur and artoria okay Buys we're just looking at that real sports. quick it's often misconceived that proto arthur and goddess artoria are the only ones that goddess have these artoria seals. when in fact in her interlude saber tells you that her blade has these exact same restrictions we also have to mention that Excalibur a plus was plus as the sword of promised victory and if you take a look at fate Excella, it tells us that Excalibur was the same weapon used to defeat the white titan Safar eons ago to put that into perspective Safar is the same 14, creature that ravaged geez. all of earth and destroyed all the early civilizations the only thing that was able to put it down was Excalibur and Saber is now in possession of that very same weapon this is what you're dealing with if she can break her seals that's bigger than her taking out Jill's giant whore that everybody else made a big deal about in one shot that's bigger than her doing a city-wide Excalibur blast that vanquished all the nearby shadows and hollow ataraxia and it's even greater than her and Gawain beating the dragon oh, of Vortigern after cool fighting right there. him for several hours. You know me, I like those dragons. Everyone. Next, we gotta talk about her adaptability. Several times throughout the story, Saber has shown the ability to adapt to different situations. Using invisible air against Diarmu and angling her body to avoid- Oh yeah, that was a crazy angle. Second, when Gil had her upside down by the foot in their second fight, she used her other leg to kick this man with the quickness. She kicked the stimulus check out this man. <laughs> nah, oh bro. my goodness. And of course you have times like UB Dub when Ren mentions that Saber lured Heracles to the graveyard 
on purpose as a method of survival. She also did it to keep her master out of harm's way. Lastly, I want to talk about her greatest downfalls. If I had to put them collectively, I would say it is her seals, her impulsiveness, and her character itself. While the seals do allow her to conserve power, it also means that she'll never get to fight at her full potential under normal standards. The only thing she can do is work with however many seals she has released. For her impulsive side, you can tell that Saber really likes to fight. She might jump head first into a situation that she really doesn't need to be in. Using invisible air against the move was tactful, but it's definitely not worth putting yourself in a position where you might get killed. And for her character itself, I do love her character, but it also seeps into her fighting style. For example, her honor. When she fought against DR Mood the second time, she deliberately handicapped herself to honor the fact that he broke her curse. That's just who she is. She's just solid like that. On the flip side, there was absolutely no reason for this. Yeah, you it's didn't have war. to do all that. Anything goes. Honor is fine as long as you're fighting someone honorable, like DR Mood. But if you're fighting against somebody like curse arm Hassan who's out here jumping the whole cast with the shadow honor is about to look real bad for you so what does she take overall Roman who we know to be Solomon a top tier servant and a former grand servant also spoke highly upon Saber's name top class even, even more he okay. in her interlude that her spirit origin is one that can hang with the best of the best I gotta serve my girl with the a rank a -rank, yeah having avalon and his i mean that's yeah definitely to be expected her well over the majority of the other servants couple this fact with her instincts her destructive power and her ability to adapt to pretty much any given situation and you got yourself some real <laughs> yo bro, what we got going on here you guys think like the video if you enjoyed it follow yeah. me on twitter for more updates on the channel and i will be back with more tight moon content tight moon it is your boy Saya. i'm out and that is it for this one yeah that was definitely some information some things i knew some i didn't like yeah what was it i already read it like i think i actually need oh yeah right here um avalon yeah, I already read it in the last one. I think with Emmy. Yeah, don't sleep on Emmy. Yeah, he, he showed this. But. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I mean. I, she's going to be strong pretty much regardless in most battles. I don't think these seals are going to like, you know, really restrain her that much. But it really does depend. Like if it's an opponent that you really do have to beat um or go against that yeah you just can't be bothered by any of these restraints or seals then i get that but most of the time i think she'll be like yeah fighting for humanity okay but it can be okay must not be against it though sometimes you might have to go against humanity so that'll be a problem must be to live so yeah you can't oh yeah see that so what would that mean like you can't sacrifice yourself must be to save the war yeah i can see all right well that is that are that's the restraints you can i don't even think i even knew about that really see this is yeah definitely a good video good thing i did this because I, I mean i basically know everything about artoria at this point by now i mean i've looked at everything fate related even the old one right i, I know i didn't have to do all that but i was like now nah, let me look at the original fate way back was it 2007 or something or 2008 whenever it came out let me see what this is all about and surely enough this was some heat like they still had clean animation you know um i wouldn't say that or not um 
I do like the updated look of them better than this, right? But I mean, I can't blame them, right? This is like an older type of anime, so yeah, it's just kind of like having to get used to that style after, and it's not even just fate. Like I'm literally used, I was already used to like other updated animation and stuff, Attack on Titan and all that, you know? So yeah, just looking at that older, it's like, oh, hold up. Guys, to get used to this. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I'm gonna try and pay attention more to like them actually like dodging things, cause like I did not even realize like what was it against Lancelot dodging these bullets and uh, whatever it was, explosives. Let me see. Yeah, like right here, whatever she was dodging. And then thinking like, oh no, she gotta be quite, you know, she gotta be quick to just dodge it. Or if she was still in the range, it's like she's still gotta be durable if it's an explosion. So yeah, I'm gonna try and um look for that more because yeah, that's as simple as that. That's just a feat in itself showing how durable you may be or how quick you can be. Cause yeah, I never realized. And that's that's exactly what I love about Saya. Like even just the simplest of things, he still just brings that into the video, makes that known. Cause really, it's like we already know she's quick, but like just showing that she's dodging a certain bullet from a certain gun. I don't even know machine gun or something, or literally dodging whole explosives, getting out of the way of this and that, or literally getting hit point blank. Right with explosives and just showing how durable she is just simple as that but yeah this was definitely good because yeah i know obviously she's going to be like probably one of the survival survival survivors right of like the grail war wars because she's like the main character so obviously she's going to be one of the last servants besides like ku or medusa and all but still it's like can, can i see her go crazy especially fate zero like you know i'm looking back at it now and i'm like okay they really were like handicapping her you know i know she didn't have like what one hand really um at least that one simple finger but still like the most i'm seeing her doing is excalibur and yes looking back um I see, yeah, she was doing like crazy angles and all, but yeah, I'm like <laughs> kind of nerfing her, isn't aren't they? Like, I th I'm thinking like, should she be stronger than this? Especially from what I'm hearing here. But yeah, if you, um, you know, bring in the little things like how Saya did, now I can see, yeah, she wasn't entirely nerfed, but yeah. I'm like a lot more they could have done a lot more with her but i know obviously not because you you don't want to make her too powerful and just take everyone out you know you want to give her a challenge make her make it seem like she got a challenge right um compared to just taking someone like heracles out just like that um actually i don't think i've seen this <laughs> i guess perfectly just got on this Sword of Promise Victory, not a weapon made by men, but a divine weapon forged by the planet. Yeah, magical energy into light creates, in, creates, increases its kinetic energy by converging and accelerating it and allows for usage of sorcery on the level of divine spirits. Okay, range, yeah, that range is crazy. Yeah, she can really... Whatever, um, was it to Gil? Yeah, literally do that. It was it maximum? Yeah, a thousand people. But even yeah, even with that invisible air stuff, using like what eight percent of her power. So yeah, that's what I was saying. But it's not like they were like really nerfing her at that point. Okay, well, this was informative. I definitely enjoyed this. And like I said from Saya, I just love how he just 
points out those little things and not biased either like yeah he's actually like saber is his favorite well at this point but he actually did talk about like the downfalls or disadvantages of her and things that she could have done better compared to doing it this way or that way but other than that hope you guys did enjoy make sure you like subscribe again and i'll just see you guys in the next one